Does your ribbing look like this, but you want it to look like this? Then keep on watching. Hi everyone, my name is Norman. I run the blog nimbleneedles.com and today I want to show you how to make rib stitches neater. No matter if it's a one by one rib stitch, a two by two rib stitch or any other knit pearl combination. This video has been requested quite a lot. A two by two rib stitch may seem to be one of the easiest knitting stitch patterns of them all. After all, you will find it in any knitting stitch book for beginners very close to the front. But it is my honest opinion that it's actually one of the most difficult knitting stitch patterns of them all because it's just so easy to mess up your tension and your stitch definition whenever you switch from a knit stitch to a purl stitch. So if you have been fighting endlessly against those loose stitches, wonky ribs or things just not looking right, then this video was made for you. First, I will show you why your rib stitches may not look neat. And then I will show you quite a couple of different ways to fix it. So your ribbing will look like this in the end. So let's dive right into it and show you how to knit neat rib stitches. But before, like this video right now to support my work. And if you have problems with a different knitting stitch pattern or any other tension issues you want me to record a video about, make sure to comment. Now fasten your seat belts or your knitting belts if you have one. I'm about to show you why your ribbing may look a bit wonky and not neat at all. And I promise you once you understand this single fact, you will be able to bring your knitting to a whole new level. It's because the stitches on your needle are twisted around by 45 degrees around the barrel of your needle. So off the, ne off the needles, the stitches all lay flat. But when they're on the needle, they are twisted. And this may cause a lot of issues. So when I knit a knit stitch next to a knit stitch, the yarn that is needed itself is defined by the size of your needle. I can pull all I want on the working yarn. The knitting needle will define the size of your stitches. And since the previous stitches are all tightly wrapped around the needle as well, I cannot diminish these in size either. And that is true no matter which stitch is sitting on your needles, purl stitch, knit stitch, decrease or increase. What is off the hooks, well off the needles really, is the little bit of yarn that is between those stitches. And since it stays in back, the yarn only has to travel this short distance. But what happens if I knit a purl stitch after a knit stitch? Well, the yarn comes here out in the back. Then I bring the yarn to the front and now it enters the purl stitch through the front like this. So it's a bit like the letter S. Let's take that off the needles. So here is our purl stitch and this is the knit stitch. And when things lay flat, the distance is very short. But on the needles, the stitches don't, uh, they, they don't sit on the needles like this. They sit on the needle like this. So the yarn comes out here in the back, then travels here to the front and then gets in through the front. So see what's happening. All that extra yarn, the, the, all that extra length the yarn has to travel. And here between two purl stitches, what happens? Well, not the same because the yarn exits the purl stitch through the front and enters so it doesn't have to go all the way around between two knit stitches it's the exact opposite so it gets out through the back here but it can enter through the back as well so the distance is quite short as well and now comes the very interesting part when you come from a purl stitch to a knit stitch what happens well, this is actually the shortest di distance. As you can see, the yarn gets out through the front and directly uh, enters through the back. So this means here you have the shortest distance for this column. And here for this column, 
you have the longest distance uh, the yarn has to travel between two stitches. And once you understand this concept, knitting need ribbings will be a breeze because it really boils down to preventing the creation of that little bit of extra slack between a knit and a purl stitch. Let's show you how you can achieve that. The number one golden rule for knitting need ribbings is tightening up after every first purl stitch. So I knit those knit stitches as normal. And then I bring the yarn to the front, purl that stitch. And now I tuck on the working yarn and see how it removes the slack here. And then I purl the next stitch with my standard tension so I don't tuck on the tail. Um, and things should be really fine. You shouldn't uh, pull tight here. And then I bring the yarn to the back, knit the next two stitches, bring the yarn to the front, purl one stitch, and again I tuck on the working yarn and see how it removes the slack. Purl one stitch, knit two, one last time, purl and tighten up. And this method will work no matter which knitting stitch pattern you are working. Ribbing, ribbings, moss stitch, or any of the other uh, 2 million knit pearl combinations out there. It has to be said though, that it will not be able to remove all the slack. The minimum slack is defined by um, the barrel of your uh, knitting needles. So um, there will always be a little bit. The second thing you can do is you can purl or knit through the back loop to improve the stitch definition. Let's take a quick look at our model here to see what is happening. So I'm going to knit this stitch here through the back loop. And then I'm going to purl this stitch as normal. Now let's take that off the needles. And as you can see, because this base stitch here is twisted, the yarn gets out in front and not through the back anymore. So it doesn't have to go all the way around, but obviously goes in through uh, the front. Still, the distance here between those stitches is shorter. It's shorter. And what also happens, a twisted loop obviously is, it needs more yarn. So it steals a bit of yarn here from the slack in between two stitches. And this effect can be used to close eyelets, but in this case, it will also find those loose stitches. And the exact same happens when you knit this stitch and you purl this through the back loop. Again, this front loop here is twisted. So the yarn gets out here in the back and makes this half S. But here in the front, it more or less can enter through the back. So again, the distance between those stitches is shorter. So here for this swatch here, this is a standard one by one rib stitch. And here I purled all purls through the back loop. And I hope you can see, this swatch wasn't blocked or anything. I hope you can see how the stitch definition improved a bit up in here. So this is just a standard one by one rib stitch. So I knit one stitch and now I don't purl it. I purl it through the back loop. I knit one stitch and purl it through the back loop. And of course you can tighten up after this stitch as well. Knit one stitch and purl it through the back loop. If purling through the back loop is a bit too difficult for you, you can also uh, work from the wrong side. So you knit those stitches through the back loop and purl a regular purl, knit through the back loop, purl a regular purl and so on. And here you can see that here on the wrong side, um, you will create a twisted rib stitch. Now it's still beautiful, but obviously it looks a bit different. Uh, here on the wrong side, you really can't uh, see those uh, twisted pearl stitches because they're hidden. But here on the wrong side, uh, you will create a different knitting stitch pattern. But for a lot of uh, patterns like the cuff of a sweater, it really doesn't matter how the wrong side looks. So it is a viable method. And I guess I also have to mention that combination knitters benefit from this effect as well, as they produce twisted pearl stitches, which they will untwist later on, but they create less slack in the process. So their ribbings typically look a bit more crisp. For my third tip, we have to dig into a bit of knitting theory again. So. 
The size of your stitch is defined by three things. Your knitting needle, your tension, and your yarn. If you use this terribly chunky yarn on tiny needles, the resulting stitches, they will still be quite big simply because the yarn needs a lot of space. However, what will be small is the transition between a knit stitch and a purl stitch because the yarn has to travel diagonally here and this diagonal will be much shorter here then where is it and then here see that's all this distance and here it's just this tiny little distance so as a general rule of thumb knitting ribbings or any other knit pearl combination on relatively small needles is always a good idea and of course knitting a uh, close to the tip of a needle is also quite smart because that the slack here between those stitches is defined by the barrel of your knitting needles and it's obviously the circumference is obviously much smaller here at the tip than here um, around the body of your needles. What you can also do is you can uh, fix the problem through slipping stitches. What do I mean? So Typically, this row of knit stitches is the one that looks a bit wonky. So, instead of knitting that stitch, you slip it and then you continue purling. Knit, and here again is the offending stitch. So, you slip it instead of knitting it. Let's do that one more time. So, just slip it purl wise and continue. And here on the back side, you will come across those stitches with a little loop here in front. And what do you do with it? Well, you bring your yarn to the front and then you fix these stitches like you would fix a normal dropped stitch. And then you slip it and keep the working yarn in front. And then you continue purling. Let's show that to you one more time. So here is another of those stitches. So bring the yarn to the front and fix that stitch. And again, I don't knit it, I slip that. And this will work because obviously a single knit stitch needs much more yarn than this little strand here you create by slipping a stitch. And when you fix it one row later, the result will be a very tight knit stitch. Now, obviously this method won't work for uh, a big scarf in a two by two rib stitch, but some patterns use ribbings very sparingly in a very decorative way. And then it can be an option or when you're knitting in the round and you end up with a big ladder here, uh, then it will work. In a similar manner, you can also knit stock knit stitch and then drop one stitch. Unravel it all the way to bottom. One more. Then turn your work around and fix that column of loose stitches using a crochet hook. There we go. All the way back to top, back, and there is your one by one rib stitch. Now this works because when you knit stock and knit stitch, you usually knit with a very uniform tension without any slack here between the stitches. So the resulting purl stitches you recreate uh, with your crochet hook um, won't be too loose either. Now I want to be honest with you here. I don't use this technique either with a crochet hook or uh, by slipping stitches because I found that my uh, stitch definition is quite neat to begin with. And when you fix things with a crochet hook or um, with your knitting needles, you can also pull too hard on the stitch and thereby um, create a loose stitch as well and steal yarn from the adjacent stitches. So it's not a technique for me, but I know for a fact that a lot of knitters find them helpful. Oh, and one more thing, this actually can be a very viable uh, method to keep your stock knit stitch from curling. Um, if you notice, I don't know, you, you've knitted a scarf in stock knit stitch and you notice it's curling here on the edges, just uh, drop a column of knit stitches and turn them into pearl stitches. 
And just in case, I'll link you my tutorial on how I keep knitting from curling up in here in case you are interested. Tip number five to knit need ribbings, change yarn. At this point, we also have to talk about one of my favorite topics, spin. Sadly, very few people spin their own yarn these days. I don't do it either. Still, because most of us buy yarn at a store, a lot of knitters are not aware of the effects the spin will have in your fabric. Ideally speaking, your yarn should have a very balanced spin, meaning if you unravel your skein, it stays straight. And in this ideal world, you don't add or uh, take away spin uh, as you wind your yarn and you knit it and your fabric lives happily ever after in a balanced world. Well, the reality is that few yarns behave in this way or in this ideal way and very few knitters can achieve a balanced fabric. And for a lot of fabrics, that's not even what you want, for example, lace or so. But when you're knitting ribbings, you don't want your stitches to roll away from each other because the yarn is twisted in that direction. And you don't want your stitches to have a very strong bias either in in one direction or another. A lot of you may have observed this effect when knitting stock knit stitch. Suddenly there is this one continuous line of, or this one continuous line, and these little slanting stitches instead of a column of V's here. And a similar thing can happen to your ribbings. When your yarn has a lot of spin, um, the ribbings, uh, can roll out. In this case, the effect is not very pronounced. Still, you can see that your ribbings look a bit different than here. Now, here comes the truly difficult part. I cannot tell you how to fix it. And it's something you have to find out yourself. All I can do is I can point you in the right direction. Most commercially available yarns are spun with a set spin and plied with an S spin. So I don't know how well you can see this, but see these lines here? Um, so it's uh, plied with an S spin, like the letter S in this direction. And if you were to unply this DK yarn here, the individual strands would have a set spin, meaning um, the line would slant in this direction. And by plying these two uh, together in an opposite direction, um, you create a balanced yarn. In recent years, single ply yarns have become quite popular. See, this has a set spin. See how the spin slants in that direction. And those typically aren't balanced yarns, so the stitch the resulting stitch definition will be less uniform and thereby also your ribbings. And of course, there are also two ply or three ply yarns, as in this case, and each and every one of them will have a different uh, stitch definition. But it will largely depend on not only your knitting stitch pattern, but also on your individual knitting techniques. Let me show you something. Now I'm doing something here that may seem a bit crazy. I am knitting a little swatch using a ribbon and I'm doing this so I can hopefully illustrate how twist may work. So I have my little well, yarn cake here and I'm doing a center pull and you can see how it add twists. So let's knit a couple of stitches and I'm doing it con the continental way. So see here, this is twisted and it's twisted uh, counterclockwise. So I'm going to knit a couple of stitches here and I want you to focus here on this yarn here. So as I'm knitting, it's a bit difficult, sorry. As I'm knitting, you may see that this part here always stays flat. So what does this mean? The twist here from the yarn cake doesn't carry over to the working yarn. So the working yarn always stays flat. And this means basically at one point this will curl up so much that you have to untwist it. Or maybe it twists so much that it will carry on. But what you're doing here around the working needle is basically you are just adding the standard counterclockwise. I am basically, as I'm knitting, I'm doing this, this. 
This may be totally different for someone who is an English native because they're the um, they're the uh, index finger may not work as a buffer in a similar way. So maybe some English knitters may carry all the twist along to their knitting needles as they knit. And obviously, if you are a um, Portuguese knitter or a uh, combination knitter, then you will twist the yarn around the needle exactly the other way around. So you will add a um, clockwise twist to, to it all. Now, it's very important to note that I cannot tell you what you are doing here. All I can tell you is that you may be doing something. So maybe um, you are the way you wind your yarn and then unwind it adds a counterclockwise twist to your working yarn. And as you knit stitches, you add a clockwise twist to your uh, stitches, thereby you balance the stitches. Or you do it the other way around. Um, you, you add a counterclockwise twist as you wind, unwind the yarn and you add another counterclockwise twist as you knit it, thereby your working yarn ends up very, very uh, twisted and your fabric ends up having a, a strong bias. And I want to be very clear here. This is not to say you shouldn't do center pulls just because it adds twist to your working yarn or maybe that you should wind your uh, yarn, uh, yarn cakes clockwise or counterclockwise. It is to say, check what you're doing, knit swatches, and then decide for uh, the version that works best for you and your yarn and your knitting uh, stitch pattern. So maybe wind a yarn cake, a little yarn cake clockwise and one counterclockwise and then check what is happening. Or maybe put your yarn cake on a, um, on a spindle and then uh, pull out the working yarn um, in a balanced way so that the yarn cake can move around as you unwind it. And then compare these three swatches and check if there is a difference. And if there is a difference, check uh, which version you like best. And I promise you, it will improve your understanding of knitting and of course your stitch definition. Now you may go, well, Norman, that's a bit too esoteric for me. Why should I care? Well, the reason why this swatch here in a 2x2 rip stitch looks so crisp is because, among other things, is because the yarn here in the fabric is balanced. And as you knit, you may over twist your yarn and then something like this will happen in your fabric. Or you untwist the plies and then your then your uh, yarn will look like this and that won't be very pretty either. So it's definitely something to consider and definitely something to avoid. So another thing that can really influence your stitch definition is the yarn quality itself. So we are back to this little swatch in a one by one rib stitch and I'm using this very rustic organic uh, plant dyed yarn here and it has a lot of friction. You probably can't see this, but trust me. And what will happen is when you purl that stitch and I told you to tighten up, because the yarn has so much friction, it's often very difficult to do this consistently. So, um, and the result, because you can't do it consistently, the result will be a wonky rib. So as I told you, you can fix a bit of the issue by knitting twisted rib stitches. But at the end of the day, without changing your knitting style or pattern, getting neat ribbings might simply boil down to picking a different yarn. And of course, you really shouldn't expect the same kind of results when using a hand spun yarn or a novelty yarn compared to an industrially spun wholesale yarn. So now I want to talk about another topic with you and that's the difference between flat knitting and knitting in the round. So this is the exact same yarn. The, I use the exact same needles and it's the exact same knitting stitch pattern. So a two by two rib. And I hope you can see this here for the swatch in the round. I end up with a tight uh, row of knit stitches and a very loose one. And here for uh, the flat uh, swatch, the ribbings are a lot more balanced. 
And this is cable spun cashmere yarn. And for me and my knitting style, that's not an ideal yarn for ribbings. But why is there a difference between flat and round? Well, when you knit in the round, you create a little bit of slack here between the knit and purl stitches, always in the exact same spot. But when you knit flat, you will create a bit of slack here in this round and then a bit of slack here in this round. So thereby you kind of distribute the stitches with an uneven tension and thereby the effect can be a bit less noticeable. You know, this is just saying, if you notice a problem, you may try switching between knitting flat and in the round. Steaking will allow you to turn a tubular project into a flat one later on, and mattress stitch will help you joining things in the round you knit flat. But it's also saying, if you knit your swatches flat for a tubular project, you may be in for a surprise. Now, what if you have been following all my advice diligently and your ribbing still looks off? Well, then there is one little piece of advice. First of all, patience and practice makes an excellent knitter and not reading a lot of books or watching a lot of YouTube videos. So if you are a beginner and your ribbing still look a bit wonky, that's where you need to be realistic and say, hey, I've only been doing this for a month or two. I can't expect the same results as someone who has been knitting for 30 years or more. You don't pick up a brush either and expect to be another Leonardo da Vinci after your third stroke. But that doesn't mean the hobby cannot bring you joy or your finished project might still be beautiful in their own way. Also, at one point, you have to accept the limitations of knitting. There are certain things you cannot do and totally eliminating that bit of slack between a knit and a purl stitch is physically impossible through normal knitting means. I personally feel as long as it's regular, I call it a feature. You don't start complaining that your lace eyelets have this a little knit two together only on one side either. It's how things are done and you have to embrace it rather than fight it. Anyway, that was my tutorial on how to knit neat ribbings. Please like this video if you enjoyed watching, comment with your questions and your feedback and don't forget to subscribe in case you don't want to miss any new videos. Happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day.